Hi, this is a demonstration of how I accomplished the syncing up of the audio with my animation in the little 1000 subscription animation that I did. I'm using Hype, which is by Tumult, and there's a link to it in my Read More section. Um, notice I have my background there, and another layer is my face, and then there's also a layer for my mouth, which you see stays behind there. Um, the mouth, I'll show you how I'm going to make that disappear in a minute. But notice I have myself already tweened in, and notice there's the tween line, which I um, manipulated the Bezier curves on that to make it look like I was walking. Now, the issue with hype is that you can't actually see a soundtrack. When you bring in audio, at least in this version, which is the Pro version 3.5, you can't see the audio, and that's an issue. So there's my mouth, and if I click on the little eyeball, I can make it disappear so you can see where it's located. And that's what I want it to do, is just appear and disappear within that timeline. Now the problem is, how do you sync up the sound if you can't see it? Well, I figured out a little workaround for this. So this is the soundtrack to the piece that I did in Logic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a screen capture of just that audio with the seconds in the timeline above it. So I'm just going to click and drag over that whole section. So there it is. I've captured that. Now I can put logic away. And on my desktop, there is the sound. So if I look at it, it's just a capture of what the sound looks like with the seconds, and that's really important. So I'm going to rename this to my uh, animation waveform. And then I'm simply going to open it in preview by double-clicking it. And there it is. Now, the issue is, notice the seconds don't match up in scale with the seconds on the timeline and hype. So this is the tricky part. You have to figure out how to match that. So I'm just going to zoom in on the timeline up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the seconds line in preview and when they get close, I'm going to just lock it off at that point. So I'm going to have to tweak it a little bit. So you notice they're sort of lined up, but they start drifting after a little while. So what I'm going to do is, you know, play with the window size in Hype. And that lines it up pretty close. Um, again, you don't have to have it exact. You don't want it drifting off a lot. Uh, because the mouth movement is going to be happening so quickly, people will pretty much accept that the animation is going to look okay. So now that I have it lined up the way I want, now I've got to start animating the mouth. Notice if I drag, the mouth isn't moving at all. So what I need to do is I'm going to play with the opacity on the mouth. So I've got to start off at the beginning, and I don't want it on screen when I walk into it. So I'm just going to go up to my uh, elements panel here, and I'm going to take the opacity right out. So the mouth, you can see it there in the middle, the mouth will disappear. Now I'm going to go back to where in the timeline there on the sound, I can see where my first vocals appear. And what I want to do is put another opacity keyframe at that point. Now if I were to just tween it at that point, you notice it would tween a fade of the mouth fading in as I'm coming in. So I don't want that. What we're going to have to do now is do frame by frame animation. So let me get rid of that tween. And the easiest way to do this is to go up to my time up top, and I'm just going to advance one frame. So from 07 to 08, put another keyframe. And then at that point, I can drag the opacity up. And you won't notice a fade because it's one frame. Now, over here, you notice this is a pretty long stretch where my mouth seems to be open, but there's a little slight um, dip in the sound. So I'm going to want to put a keyframe at that dip, and then I'm going to move over again one frame, and I'm going to take the opacity out at that one frame. And then I'll advance one frame again, and I'll bring the opacity back up. So what that'll look like is a very quick movement of the mouth to articulate that slight dip in the sound. 
Now the next change I'll make is when that sound completely drops off and you can see a flat line there in the waveform. So I'm going to use that entire waveform to have the mouth closed because I'm not talking. So I'll just again step, put a keyframe, and then I will hold that disappearing mouth all the way till the next time you see that waveform start to come in again. I'll put another keyframe there. And then I'll have to step one frame because remember, if I were to tween it right there, the mouth would fade back in. So I've got to put another keyframe right after that. And notice when you get to 2 9 in there, what happens is it rolls over to zero again because we're doing 30 frames a second. So I had to change it to seven seconds from 629. Then I can put another keyframe, and then I can open the mouth. Then I can put another keyframe where I can see the sound drops off take the mouth out again, step over one frame, put another keyframe, and I'll step two frames on this because the silence is a little bit longer. Then I'll bring the mouth back in. And that's basically the procedure. Everywhere where there's a pulse in the waveform, you open the mouth. When the pulse goes away, you close the mouth. And you do it keyframe by keyframe like that. It's tedious, but it doesn't look too bad when it's done. So I've inserted a few more keyframes there. So let's uh, rewind and see what it looks like so far. And once you insert the timeline action uh, keyframe at the beginning and insert the audio, then you're pretty much guaranteed if you've done it this way, the audio will line up exactly the way you see it right there. Thanks for watching.